Hi friends, welcome to Sada Learning Hub. You are with me, Sada Shaura. In this video, I am going to discuss about demonstration of Kubernetes engine. How to start the Kubernetes, how to create the Kubernetes, and also how to create the container, and all those things. I am going to discuss it now. See. Uh, the overview of this video is in this lab uh, you create a kubernetes engine clusters containing the several containers each containing a web server and you place a load balancer in front of the clusters and view its content that is i'm going to demonstrate you in this lab and coming to the objective objective of this lab is I am provisioning a Kubernetes cluster using the Kubernetes engine and deploying and manage the Docker containers using the KUBECTL command. It's a command. I am going to use this command to manage the Docker containers using that particular command. Now, this demonstration I divided into the tasks. See here my first task. This demonstration I am going to do it in quick labs. Uh, I divided into the four tasks for this demonstration. The first task I am going to log into the GCP console. After that, uh, we need to confirm APIs are enabled. Then only we are able to see the Kubernetes engine clusters and containers and all those things or features. For that, we need to uh, enable that uh, APIs. After that, uh, the third task is start the Kubernetes engine cluster by using Cloud Shell by using the commands and finally run and deploy the container. These are the four tasks I'm I'm going to do it now. I'm going to show it now. For this, uh, now I'm going to the GCP Cloud. I'm going to log in at here. For login, I have a few credentials. Now control C, control V, I'm clicking on next. This is my password. I'm going to use this password. Now I'm going to log into the GCP. Once you log in, we need to enable APIs. That is the next step. Now I don't want to update anything. Now it is going to log in. After login, we need to confirm that needed APIs are enabled. That is the mandatory. I think we will get uh, one more option privacy policy. Yes, I'm going to accept this one now click here and accept now the second task is what now the first task sign into the google cloud platform console that's completed coming to the second task confirm that needed apis are enabled i'm going to do it now how we need to confirm that one make a note here Make a note of the name of your GCP project. This value is shown in the top bar of a Google Cloud Platform Console. It will be in the form of uh, something I'm using here, Quick Labs. It will be shown like that. See here, this is my project name and followed by the hexag. This is my followed. Uh, I'm using the Quick Labs because of that reason it is starting the Quick Labs type in GCP and this is the hexadecimal number this is my project id this is my project id in the gcp console once on the navigation menu click on api and services see here click on api and services now i'm going to click on api and services once you click on api and services it will give you the dashboard 
now see it is giving the dashboard now see these are all the things are there now here enable apis enable api set here google kubernetes engine api google now see google kubernetes engine api now we need to enable this one see here try this api is enabled it's already enabled we no need to do anything make sure we need to check is that enabled or not and uh, another one is we need to enable to achieve this one container registry api container container registry api google container registry api this is the one more service we need to enable this one also see this is also enabled means the two services are enabled now we no need to do anything everything is now enabled now my second task is also completed second task is that confirm that needed apis are enabled we need to check two apis those are kubernetes engine api and as well as the container registry api if either apis are missing just click on the enable at the top uh, by searching the these two apis kubernetes engine api and container api now second task is completed coming to the third task start the kubernetes engine cluster now we need to start the kubernetes engine cluster for that how we need to do now i am going to use uh, to start the kubernetes engine cluster i am going to use the cloud shell i am going to use the commands to start the kubernetes engine cluster for that i am going to use the commands now i am opening here start the cloud shell now i am starting the cloud shell at here once after starting the cloud shell i'm going to show you something here now for our convenience uh, place the zone that quick lab assigned you to into an environment variable called my zone at the cloud shell prompt now see here uh, i got this is my zone ua central one is my zone now this particular zone sorry this is my zone i'm using this zone to put it into a constant variable called my zone for that i am going to use this export export i am going to save this particular value into my zone for that i am using the command called export command now see here simply i am using the command called export command export means what it is going to do send ua central 1 hyphen a is going to store it into my zone right after that what i'm going to do i'm going to start the kubernetes cluster managed by the kubernetes engine name the cluster web front end and configure it to run two nodes now i am trying to create a kubernetes engine with the two nodes by using the command g cloud is the command i am going to use the container container clusters create is the i am name i am giving the name called web front end i am using the zone called ua central a and i am i am asking to run the two nodes this is the command to create a kubernetes engine now see i am creating the kubernetes engine with the two nodes now it is going to create the kubernetes engine 
see here starting 1.2 new cluster will have the basic authentication disabled by default and something something blah these are the warnings we don't need to worry about all those things now cluster is being configured now starting the kubernet kubernetes v version 1.10 new clusters will be no larger get computer rw it takes time to create it no need to worry about this thing now clusters are going to creating it takes the several minutes to create the clusters at the kubernetes engine provisions virtual machines for you it takes the time to create the clusters after creating after the cluster is created uh, check your installed version of the kubernetes using by kubectl version command now after install after creating the clusters we'll check what version kubernetes engine is created now we'll see after creating the cluster now see status is going happening at here now kubernetes engine is going to create on the clusters see this is the command g cloud container clusters create where friend end is my name and hyphen hyphen zone where which zone we need to create we need to mention the zone name at here how many nodes you want to create we need to give the nodes at here It takes a bit time to create Kubernetes clusters. Now see, it is done. Now it is created means kube config handler generated a front end. The name is called front end and the location is called it is created in the location UA Central 1A and the master version is 1.1.6 hyphen gk2 and coming to and coming to master ip is this and mission type uh, this is the mission type and node now after creating number of nodes two uh, two nodes are created and coming to Mm, status is running now kubernetes is running if you want to check the version of this kubernetes simply we can go here uh, this is the command to check the version of the kubernetes now see i'm checking the version here it is going to return the version of the kubernetes see here now this is i'm um, using the command client version of major 1 point minor 10 and uh, git version is v1.107 and coming to git commit is this and git tree state is this and bind date is this and go version this is the versions related thing kubernetes versions and if you want to see this is the kubernetes versions uh, view your running nodes in the gcp console if you want to see now I'm using I'm I'm created the Kubernetes engine by using the cloud shell if you want to see is it really created or not by using GCP console just we need to click on the navigate button and go to the compute engine here there is a compute engine inside the compute engine go to the virtual machines If you go to the virtual machines, now it is it will show you. See here, two nodes are created. See GKE front end default pool, GKE front end default pool. The two nodes are created, right? I'm I'm created. 
clusters by using the G cloud shell. Now, if you want to see by using the GCP console, it's available in virtual machines, compute engine under the virtual machines. These are the two clusters it is created. Now, task three is completed. Now, moving to the task four, what exactly the task four? Coming to the task four, run and deploy the container. Now, I'm able to start the Kubernetes engine clusters. I'm able to create the Kubernetes engine clusters. Now, the fourth task is run and deploy the container. Run and deploy the container means I'm going to run my container and deploy the one application into this particular container. I'm going to check it. Is it works or not? For that, what I'm going to do is uh, from your cloud shell prompt, launch the single instance of NGINX container. Now I'm going to show here. Now this is my just now. This is my cloud shell, right? Or otherwise, if you click it here, it is open to the cloud shell. Inside the cloud shell, I am going to launch the single instance of NGINX container. Now I am going to launch the ng in a NGINX. Now see this is I am going to launch. I am clicking on the enter. I am going to launch. In the Kubernetes, all the containers runs in the pods. This use of the KUBCTL run command caused the Kubernetes to create and deploying the consisting of the single prod containing the NGNX container. A Kubernetes deployment keeps gives a number of pods up and running even the event of failures among the nodes on which they run. In this command, you launch the default number of pods, which is one. Now, see here, once it is, my pod is created. See, deployment.apps nginx is created. Once nginx is created, I want to check prod running in the nginx container or not. If you want to check that one, I'm going to use this. Is it up and running or not? Now see, I'm going to copy and I'm going to see. Now it is going to give you a running the NGNX container. See here, the name is called NGNX. This is the name and it is in ready mode and the status is running. Now the age is one minute. When it is created, it's created just before one minute. Now after that, I'm exposing the NGINX containers to the internet. Now you created NGINX in the cluster. That's okay, fine. After that, we need to expose to the internet. For that, I'm going to use this command to expose this to internet. I'm going to use this command. Now see here, see, service nginx is exposed service nginx is exposed what exactly the meaning of that one is kubernetes creates a service under external load balances with the public ip addresses attached to it the ip addresses remaining the same for the life of the service any network traffic to the public ip address is routed to the ports behind the service in this case the nginx port if you want to view the service, just we can use the get service. Now see, I'm going to use this one to get the service of this particular pod. Now I'm going to click on here. See here, my Kubernetes, this one. Now NJNX is this one. This is the IP. Now external IP is pending. Now it's not created. It takes time to create it. Now wait. Yes. Now see it's assigned IP address is created external IP address is created for ng INX 
Now you can use the displayed external IP address to test the contact that NGINX container remotely. If you want to contact this NGINX cluster, you can use this external IP to contact that NGINX. It may be a take a few seconds that before the external IP field is populated to your service. That this is normal. Just rerun the co cobert get service command every few seconds until the see now i am running it here it is not assigned it is takes time to assign it again if you are running again and again automatically we will able to see that external ip now after that what i am going to check is confirm the kubernetes has updated the number of pods if you want to get that one we can use the command called kubernetes get pods pods now see here now njnx 1.1 under status is running and response is zero sorry restarts is zero and edge is the four minutes now uh, confirm that your external ap address is not changed if you want to see external ap address changed or not simply you can get the kubernetes uh, kubect get service now see the ip address is not changed the same ip address is available now return to the web browser tab in which you viewed your cluster external ip addresses refresh the page and confirm that nginx web server is still responding or not if you want to see that one just we can go to the external ip address for this you can check it in the browser you can check in the browser at here is it running or not see welcome to nginx you see this page nginx server successfully installed and working nginx is the web server now if you want to see this is the happening now what happened in the third part now i am deployed nginx server into my cluster i assigned external ip address i try to check it from the outside now i am able to successfully run my nginx server in the clusters that is about the fourth task now run and deploy now i am able to run my application into the cluster and i am able to deploy after the de uh, running is done and deployment is done i am able to see from external ip addresses application is running successfully that is about kubernetes engine how to create the kubernetes uh, first we need to confirm that api is enabled after that start the kubernetes engine now here i am using the g cloud shell to create the kubernetes engine clusters after that i am going to run and deploy one application into and i'm first i'm creating the container after that i am deploying one application nginx into uh, i am deploying nginx into the container i'm on running into the kubernetes engine that is about kubernetes engine thank you guys thank you for watching this video if you like this video click uh, please click on the like button and thank you so much watching this video hope this lesson helpful to you keep watching our lessons keep writing to us do not forget subscribe our channel Sadot Learning Hub because we have many sessions that would help you to develop our skills and I will be back soon till then you take care bye bye.